and gentlemen, I am so excited to introduce to you Natalie Moore and her talk called The Importance of Caring. Please join me in welcoming Natalie! It's a question that's loomed over all of us for as long as we can remember. What do you want to be when you grow up? In kindergarten, I wanted to be a princess, of course. That idea was then shot down by my older sister who explained how monarchy worked. Well, then I wanted to be the next best thing, <coughs> Hannah Montana. <laughs> when she retired, of course. That idea evolved to Broadway star, to architect, to doctor, with only a few dozen variants in between. It only took... <laughs> it only took me 18 years and a few great teachers for me to realize what I've been doing so wrong all these years. Asking the wrong question. I shouldn't have worried tirelessly over what I wanted to be, but what I wanted to do. Now, many of you may believe I just asked the same question, just phrased slightly differently. But some of you may just be catching on to the idea. I ask you to look into your hearts to see not only the profession you would like to have so that you can adult properly and pay bills and whatever, but to see what you would want to accomplish in your lifetime and what you can do to see it done and then do it. What do you care about? When you live your unique life day after day, what is it that gets you fired up inside? What injustices leave your insides writhing and what victories bring tears of joy to your eyes? Find that. And then throw everything you've got into it. Into bettering it, perfecting it, making this world a better place in a way that only you can. Now you're probably wondering who this rando is coming to give you all this life advice about finding passions when she literally looks five. <laughs> My name is Natalie Moore, and I kick-started and led the provincial-wide walkout that happened April 4th, 2019 to uh, protest the proposed cuts to education by the Ford government under the name of Students Say No. With the help of a team made up of eager, passionate students across Ontario who messaged me wanting to help out, we registered over 700 schools to walk out, an estimated 150,000 students. Now, if I'm being honest, Never in a million years did I expect that putting care into something could make it blow up as big as it did. My goal when I created the Instagram was to raise awareness for what was going on in attempts to stop it in its tracks. But I'm an 18 year old girl from rural Ontario, a town of like 7,500 people, and I somehow created this movement that sparked outcry for justice within our education system so large that Doug Ford couldn't even believe it was student-led. I can hardly believe it myself. But it just goes to show that you don't have to be from Toronto or some other political hub to be successful in creating change that can impact thousands of people. Since so many of you are from Toronto, think of what I was able to do from my small town and how much more you can do here with the power, the resources, the people, just a TTC right away. Don't let location be a barrier for what you want to achieve, whether it's here in Canada or across the ocean fighting world hunger. Don't let that stop you from achieving what you want to accomplish. Now I want to take a look at what young young youth <laughs> have done in the past um, to create change and um, really inspire people. Um, youth have been driving change for generations by stepping up to the plate and we're only getting stronger and more confident. And because of that, there are people like Anne Frank who um, has inspired people to speak out against injustice through her intimate accounts of the struggles of Jewish people in World War II. Her diary has been translated into more than 70 languages and has sold more than 30 million copies. Claudette Colvin, 
African-American 15-year-old girl who refused to give up her seat to a Caucasian writer nine months before Rosa Parks did. Her case was one of four that led to the Supreme Court outlawing segregation on Alabama buses. And today, youth are getting more and more involved in today's issues, and that's even inspiring more to get involved. We have people like Greta Thunberg, climate change activist, who began protesting outside of Swedish Parliament to demand the immediate action for climate change. She started this movement by herself, and her actions have sparked thousands of schools across the globe to strike for climate. Rain Fisher Kwan. She led the protests against the sex ed curriculum changes and aided myself in the walkouts about education. She continues to speak at conferences and events to inspire youth to take action. There's, there's small steps that ballooned into much larger, much greater things are not only creating amazing change, but are inspiring others to take action as well. You know, I've always possessed a passion for education and equity within it. Part of the reason why I wanted to become a student trustee and advocate for students at my school board as well as create change. Brain spoke at a conference I attended as a student trustee. And she was the inspiration I needed, as well as the connection that made it so much easier to achieve my goal. Now I want to get into the how of making change. Taking what you have to achieve great things. It can be your skills, your influence, your connections, your resources. Anything that you can think of. Using it to make this world better. What's in your toolbox? What do you have that makes you special? What is it that you care about? Find that and do what you can to make the change that you can. This was the post um, <coughs> that was originally posted to the Student Say No account. This was the last um, engagements that I had screenshotted way back when. And look at the reach that it had from a girl, a small town girl, that was able to reach thousands of people. Now, there's a lot of sensitivity to a lot of time sensitivity to the problems that we have in the world today. And it's for that reason that we need to act quickly. Ask yourself, what is holding you back? What barriers are there? And move them out of your way. I promise you that there is a way to break down that barrier. And a lot of times, it's our fear of failure. But I tell you, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. Look to the people who have came before you for inspiration. And many people say that success is about who you know. But while I consider that a pretty shallow and not entirely truthful statement, it can play a factor depending on your end goal. I was extremely fortunate. I had an army of student trustees behind me who you know, were just as passionate about education as I was. Between all of us, we nearly reached across the province, and that's what made it so easy to reach that many people. And through my experience as student trustee, I also met Rain Fisher Kwan, who, without her, I have no doubt in my mind that it would not have been nearly as easy to, not that it was easy, but um, it definitely would have been a lot more complicated, and I would have had a lot more late nights. Can we all take a moment to say hello to the people sitting next to us? 
You never know what this person is going to be doing in four years. You never know who they know or will know. And you need to make the effort to get to know them. You know, caring about things is a life skill. And it may or may not boost your resume, but it'll definitely improve your confidence and your skill set. You know, the, the minds and the passion of youth have such great capacity to do amazing things. They have this, this wonder and this drive that has, has such, such potential. I really want to get across the point that we need to care about the issues that are going on. Because a lot of our youth today can be apathetic. And I want you to imagine the worst case scenario of, you know, what would happen if you chose not to care. If no one else stood up and you were the only person who could. That problem would just grow and spread until it could no longer be contained or stopped. Is that the kind of world that you want to live in? I ask you, who is better for the job than you who feel so passionately about that, whatever it is? We need to take the time to reflect on our values, our ethics, and what will make this world a better place. We have to think not only of ourselves and our futures, but, you know, of those who will come after us. Our children, our grandchildren. We need to act now, because you know we'll regret it if we don't. If we look back and see all the devastation that easily could have been prevented by the actions that we take. We need to problem solve. Because that's what's going to get us out of all these messes, all these webs that have been spun. And as for me, I'm going to be advocating for a new passion of mine. Healthcare. I'm in first year of nursing and I'm liking it so far. Um, there's a lot of avenues for advocacy in it. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to go on to do my master's to be a nurse practitioner or maybe law school to advocate for clients in a courtroom or get a job at the RNAO advocating for public policy change. But anyway I go, I want to continue advocating for people. Because that's what I care about. And I want to do it any way I can to make this healthcare system better as the population ages and need increases. I think my real passion is fighting for the underdog, fighting for justice. And I'll dedicate my life to balancing the scales. Now, it's very easy for us to create these excuses for ourselves as to why we can't create change now. When I'm older, I hate this phrase. <coughs> when I'm older, I'll be able to help the environment because right now my parents make the household decisions and I can't do much as one person. But you can do so much. Air dry your clothes. Dryers are a huge waste of energy. Manufacturers of refrigerators, washers, and dishwashers all have increased their energy efficiency, but the energy efficiency of a dryer has barely increased since 1981. 
In fact, a new dryer can consume as much energy as a refrigerator, washer, and dishwasher combined. Take shorter showers. The average shower uses five gallons of water a minute. If you could just shorten your showers by two minutes, you would save 10 gallons of water. When I'm older, I'll be able to do something about how our young people are educated because I can't vote yet anyways, and adults don't listen to kids. But you can advocate. So easily nowadays through social media, it's so easy to get a point across or spark someone's curiosity in 280 characters. Write a letter to your MPP or set up a meeting. You can't vote yet, but they, you still need to live with the choices that the government has. They need to hear your concerns too. Write a letter to your school board and ask your friends to do the same or sign yours. They can't make changes necessarily, but with enough concern, they can advocate and write um, advisory letters to the government. Now, this is the word that I really want to talk about, is caring. Because everybody cares about something different. Everybody has different passions, and that'll carry through to whatever career you decide to go with. But I encourage you to reflect on your decisions as you go into post-secondary, and make sure that you're not just worrying about paying your bills. Because what you choose to do for the rest of your lives is kind of a big deal, and I don't know why they make us do it when we're 18 but it's important. And make sure that you're choosing something you care about because that's ultimately what's gonna make the change in our world. We need to keep the ball rolling. I think that our generation is gonna be one of great change. One where we scrap the systems that have held us under lock and key for ages. The ones that Um, we'll be able to reform and improve so that our kids and grandkids can thrive. We can live in a world where the richest 20% of Canadians will own 70% of the wealth, and one where the poorest 20% of Canadians will own less than 1% of Canada's wealth. One where CEOs will be making that of 206 times their average worker's wage. One where we don't have to pay for the required courses because our education that's publicly funded no longer offers them. One where kids won't be dying of lead poisoning and asthma because the water is, is contaminated and the air isn't breathable. Now I ask you as you go from here to take a look at this quote from Will Rogers. I think it's really um, encapturing of what I'm trying to get across here. If you want to be successful, truly successful, know what you are doing, love what you're doing, and believe in what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs>